How you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today's job we have a head bracket off a tilt bucket from a 90 ton excavator. So you did hear correctly, this actually suits a ZX890 Hitachi excavator. This is a special purpose machine. It does have three different attachments that it uses. It has a standard tooth bucket for all the heavy bulk earthwork. It also has a ripper used for ripping the ground to loosen things up so it can then be loaded into a truck. And then it has its tilt bucket for doing final nice precise trimming work. And they are all attached to the machine using a quick hitch. It's not very common to see a quick hitch on a machine this size because they are generally used for bulk earthworks. By adding a quick hitch onto any excavator, you do decrease the digging power of the machine because you have essentially made the dipper arm longer. So when you go and add a quick hitch plus a tilting bucket like this, you do decrease its horsepower and its breakout force. The way this is sitting on the floor, it is actually upside down. So in real life, when this is attached to the bucket, it is up the other way. These two pins connect the head bracket to the quick hitch, and this position here connects the head bracket onto the bucket. So the repairs we need to do, we do have some line boring to be done on the main pivot of the hitch, and we also have some cracks to repair and one boss to weld back in place and then line bore that position as well. So the main pivot position is not actually totally destroyed like we usually have to repair. It is simply just worn out. And the reason it's worn out is maybe the bush wasn't tight enough in the main pivot position to start with. So it's no wonder it's worn out because there is a, all the machine's horsepower going through this part of the hitch. And the repairs we need to do up here, this is where the tilt cylinders attach to the head bracket and then attach to the bucket in order to tilt it left to right. So we do have these spaces on the inside of the ears. One of them is cracked and one of them is completely missing. These aren't really a structural part. These are just to hold the cylinders in the center of the hitch. And the reason one of them broke off is the pin actually broke and then everything started working itself loose and it broke the spacer off. So to get started on the repair, I need to gouge out the crack on this spacer. I then need to remove the weld material on this side and then reattach that spacer. So we'll take it outside to our outdoor welding area and get started. Righto guys, so we're going to start the line boring now. I need to set up the boring bar central to the surfaces we are going to be boring. I can't use the outer areas because they are slightly worn out. So I am going to use the inner shoulder where the bush actually stops against because it will be the closest concentric machine surface that we can use. So to do that, I would generally use my centering cones. Unfortunately, they are about three mil too small in diameter to actually pick up on that surface. So what I'm gonna to have to do, I'm gonna to have to machine up two new centering cones so we can get this repair started.
Just wait. <laughs> Sit. Stay. Leave it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Righto guys, so we're about to get our line borer set up. I could go and use my standard Sir Mechanica mounts in order to do this, but I just got my new shop made mounts back from nitriding, so we're gonna put those together and use them. So you can see the nitriding came out really good on these. I'm really happy with the outcome. So we're gonna take them over to the press, we're gonna install all the bearings, install the snap rings, and then we can finish assembling the bearing mounts. So I'm gonna be installing four bearings in each of the mounts. That is different to the way the Sir Mechanica mounts come standard. They come with two bearings and then a sleeve that joins those two bearings to act as support for the boring bar. But over time, debris and grit and stuff like that gets down inside the sleeves and it does end up opening them up and they do end up a little bit loose. So I've actually changed out the standard mounts with four bearings because it lasts longer, the machine is more accurate in my opinion. So let's get stuck into fitting all the bearings. So that is our shop made bearing mounts fully assembled. We've put all the bearings in, put the snap rings in and attached all the standoffs. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Now I get to use them, so let's go and get them set up.
ceramic ant and spatter spider. Righto guys, we've completed our bore welding on either side of the hitch. While they are cooling down, I'm going to get on to welding up the crack that I gouged out earlier. So we've gouged out that one, it just needs to be welded. But the spacer on this side was totally missing. Ideally, I would just replace the spacer, but because it is only a spacer, it doesn't really matter what sort of condition the old one is in. So I'm going to quickly clean that up so we can then reattach it. Once it's welded back on there, it's still going to serve its purpose. So we're going to get stuck into that.
So now that we've got that repair completed, we can get back onto line boring the main pivot position.
seen you for a while. A little whiny. What's this? What's that? Hmm. That's it, dude. No more for today. No. Mm -hmm. Go catch a bug. Yep. Righto guys, so we have completed the repairs on this hitch. So we have line bored the main pivot position. We did repair the crack in that spacer. We reattached the one that was broken off and we line bored that pin position as well. So there is one more thing that I need to do and that is to freeze fit the bushes that go in the main pivot position. These are the bushes that I need to fit. I will be using liquid nitrogen to get them to shrink down enough to then be put into the hitch. There is about 0.2 of a mil interference fit, which is about eight thou. So I don't want to get this wrong because these bushes are about $1,500 each and I don't want to have to go and cut one out today. So let's get onto that. Righto, so that went about as good as you could possibly hope it to go. We did have a bit of a binding issue on the other side, but all in all, it went in really well. The job is now completed. Thanks for watching. Straight. It's a bit munted. Is it really? Yeah, there's like a crease on that side. You should go get one of the new ones. This is the tilting part of the... This is the head bracket that does the tilting. Oh, fuck me, I've lost it. Right, so this bucket is actually for an ZX... This is not a bucket. Oh, fucking sweet. Oh, what, what are we calling this? Wait, how'd you start that? Right, oh, what are we saying? Fuck, where are we going with that? Oh, my lord. And the... the oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's pretty much it. Are you going to restart? I am. Yeah. You ready? Righto, so that went really, really well. You couldn't have expected... Oh. Can you try and avoid the reallys? Yeah. Righto, so that went... Re just one really. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, one really right. is enough. Right, ready? So now I get to use them, so let's go attach them. <laughs> yeah. What mm. happened? What happened? I lost it. <coughs> you ready? Right, so these two pins here, the... <laughs> Right, so these two pins connect the tilt for my jeebus! Help me, Lord! <laughs> you can't. <laughs> I got it. 
I just said it wrong. I'm just gonna start again again. Generally the weakest link's going first. So this is the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I was not doing that on purpose. <laughs> what the hell? He's trying his best. It's never gonna die. This thing's strong. I'm impressed. That is a strong squeaker. Hello, did you kill it yet? Hang on, where are you going? Oh. Still squeaking. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> 